everyone, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Today I'm going to show you how to take these laser cut hexagon boxes and turn them into dotted pieces of art. These boxes are intricately cut with a design that is perfect for dotting. This is a beginner slash intermediate level project that only requires three different paints, a few tools, and literally two different sized dots. It's deceptively easy, and for such an easy project, I think the finished piece looks extra classy and elegant. They make the perfect handmade gift, and if you sell your work at art festivals, these end up getting a lot of attention. Plus, they take no time at all to dot. I'm going to introduce you to Deco Arts Americana Gel Wood Stains. I'll talk about the classiness of a limited palette, the glory of silicone tools, and how adding expensive chocolate can take this gift to the next level. Sound good? Awesome! Let's get into it. For this project, you'll need this laser cut wood box. We'll be using these paints. All of these will be listed down in the video notes. I'll also be using these double-sided silicone tools and one of these dotting rods. That box and the tools are both available for sale at the Dotting Center, of course. So whenever I work on a wood project, I like to try and use stains so that I can preserve the quality of the wood. I really love objects that are um, that you can see the grain in the wood. It's natural looking and just beautiful. I have a lot of wood furniture in my house, so I, pr I really like when you can see the grain of wood. So I found these Deco Art Americana Gel Stains, and they are perfect for this kind of work. They're non-toxic, water-based, translucent um, stains you just basically paint it on and then you buff the excess off until you get the right color that you're looking for they don't stink they're they clean up with uh, soap and water and they're just kind of like awesome they're just perfect anyone who's ever had to use wood stains that are like oil-based and stinky chemically toxic messes you will appreciate this because um, the results are just as good and you don't have to worry about like polluting the air and the water and the earth and you can just uh, enjoy the wood grain without all the stinky mess so yeah I highly recommend these they come in three different colors oak maple and walnut and I bought all three because I knew I would use them all. These two, I'll show you. I've got one, the one on the left is maple and the one on the right is walnut. The maple has more of a red tint to it and the walnut is a little bit darker. But both are very beautiful and you just cover it with a varnish and you're good to go. Love them. So here is the final base coat for this box. I painted the top a dark teal and I painted the inside with that gel stain and it's ready to go. Okay, so laying this out for the first time, basically what you see is a bunch of different lines and these interlocking wheel designs. And I'm gonna use my silicone tool for this because basically it's just one size dot for the entire design. Um, what you want to think about here is you want to use your brightest, lightest colors on the lines that you want to accentuate and pop out. The patterns that you want to be the most visible, you want to use your most contrasting um, paint. And what you want to do for all the other dot lines that you don't want to show up, that you want to recede into the background, you want to choose a color that's closest in value to the base color. So for example, this one I'm using my brightest, uh, flashiest gold color 
to highlight these square lines. And then I'm going to choose what to do next. I mean, you could dot this, this design a hundred different ways, depending on what, um, what lines you want to show up. And that's why I love these boxes. They're really um, deceptively um, simple, but it's kind of like a puzzle, like putting a puzzle together. I'm still choosing to stick with that gold. This gold, by the way, is my very favorite color of paint. This is golden brand iridescent gold paint. It's incredibly expensive, but I will pay whatever I need to pay to have this in my palette because it's such a pretty gold and it's really easy to work with. I'm so disappointed. I, I have probably 20 different brands of gold just sitting in my drawer they're not going anywhere i'll use them for like a yard sale sign or i'll give them to the kids to play with but the only gold that's going to touch my work is going to be this golden brand gold because it's it's just fantastic it's like liquid metal Now all my gold lines are painted, everything is as I want it to be, and I'm going to come in with some pearl white paint. Now what I'm going to find with this paint is that it's semi-transparent and it just doesn't dry bright enough. So I take my silicone tool and I make quick work of scraping those off and come right back in with that golden white liquid paint, which is super opaque and really pigment rich. And I want the inside of those um, wheel shapes to be really bright. And as the lines extend out, I'm going to add some blue so that it's super bright in the middle. And then as it goes out towards the end, it gets darker. So these are the two colors that I'm using. Golden white, because it's really pigment rich. It's a nice, nice white. And I'm using that folk art metallic blue. And I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit of blue for the first few dots. And then for each row of dots extending out from the center, I'm gonna add one more little bit of blue until I hit dark blue at the edges.
Okay, so for the next row, I'm gonna add another little bit of blue for those next few dots. So now using that somewhat darker blue, I just follow the previous dot right behind it all the way around. Time to add more blue, make it a little bit darker. I also like to mix my paints with the pointed end of a silicone tool because you can scrape the sides really easily. It's kind of an added bonus. Okay, I added more blue off camera, so I have just a slightly darker blue, and I'm going to finish that line right there. Now, all we have left are the remainder of the rungs on those wheels. And I'm starting with the darkest blue that I've been mixing as the lightest color for those rungs. So these are going to start with the darkest color and end up with an even darker color blue on these lines. Adding more blue to get an even darker colored blue. And you know, the great thing about this is with a limited palette, you can still, I think it, it just is a little bit classier, you know? Uh, I have the tendency with my with most of my work to just go a little too much. I can't, I just want to be extra all the time. And sometimes if you have a real subdued palette, it just comes off like extra classy. And um, yeah, I like that every once in a while. Of course, the thing that I did after this, I bet was a million colors and neon and sparkles. But sometimes you gotta play it classy, you know. So now I move to 100% of that metallic blue as the finishing ends of those rungs, um, just so that it would have even more contrast and some of that metallicness would show up. When you add white to a metallic color, the sparkliness goes away. So uh, oh, there we go, I missed that one. and. Yeah. So this is going to add the darkest color. It's going to be close to the, the color of the base coat, which is nice. And it's just going to finish off that inside design, which you can see it went pretty smoothly, didn't it? It went pretty fast. So um, these really do not take that much time at all. And when you see the finished product, you won't believe um, how nice it looks. Uh, 
Okay, so here I see I missed a couple of the gold dots, so I'm just going in and filling in all the empty spaces with gold. And right now I can tell that this is coming together. It's going to look nice. And now I have the decision, how am I going to treat that outer border? Again, a million different decisions, all fun artistic decisions, but like I said, you could do this any number of ways. But what I decide to do is come through and do just a mimic that inside gold border all along the outside edge to kind of finish off the edge. Ooh, this is a cool shot. Wow, look at that. Now pay attention to the glory that is the silicone tool. If you haven't tried these, I really recommend giving it a shot. If you're gonna buy one set, buy the set with the silicone and stylus tools. It's a double tool and it's very inexpensive. If you dot with that silicone tool, you're going to love it. It's just, um, it's bouncy, it's comfortable, and you get way more dots, all of equal size, than you would from a stylus tool or a rod. So just something to think about, throwing it out there. And if you were to buy one, I hope you would buy it at the dotting center. But you know, just saying. So here I'm using my tiniest rod from my toolkit. And the trick here is you do um, one end, the other end, and then you split the sections in the middle. And that's the way that you get evenly spaced dots. What you, the last thing you wanna do is just dot a straight line, expecting that all your dots are going to be equally spaced. You want to make sure that you always divide that section in half and then in half again. Because that is when you get perfect spacing every time and uh, it's just going to make your life a lot easier in the end. When you have these symmetrical designs, if your dots are off by just a little bit, it's very obvious. If you have too many on one side and too little on the other side, it will be very noticeable. So that's why you really want to get your spacing right. Now see, wasn't that simple? So easy to put this together and it looks like such a finished piece. So fun. I love this project and I hope you liked it too. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because I've got more videos to come. Also, hey, if you need any dotting supplies like say perhaps a laser cut hexagon box or silicone tools or even stencils or wood pebbles or yo-yos, you name it. Just, hey, come visit me at the Dotting Center on Etsy and I will hook you up, I promise. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means a lot to me and I hope to give back through these videos. So thanks again, until next time.